Hello, my name is Nurhan Arman and I am the music director of Symphonia Toronto. Our next concert is on April the 9th and it will be live streamed from the Jane Mallet Theatre in Toronto at 8 p.m. Toronto time. The concert is titled Divertimenti and it is a beautiful program perfect for the spring. So we begin this concert with a work by Mozart his second string quartet. This is a work that he wrote in Italy while he's 16 years old and touring with his father. And we believe it was written in Bolzano in um, 1772. And the work is very much on par with other compositions of the time by other European established composers, even though Mozart is 16 years old. It's always is a humbling experience to, for any musician to, to play Mozart's music and to, to discover how old he was when he wrote it. So this one, again, beautiful work by a 16 year old. Uh, at this point, Mozart is not yet influenced by Papa Haydn. Haydn is uh, already uh, 40 years old at that point and in 1772 and he he has been an established composer composer and very well respected. Um, Mozart is also not yet into Bach too much. Uh, Bach's contrapuntal writing he would later on study and take a great interest in it. Also he would of course uh, study Haydn's, Haydn's works but not at this point. At this point, his influences are Italian. And he writes this uh, string quartet, his second ever, very much like a, a Italian symphonia uh, in three sections, fast, slow, fast. The first moment is absolutely beautiful, full of energy. It's a very charming moment. It's ebullient and it's a very sophisticated writing uh, for so very sophisticated part writing already. Uh, for the opera strings, he, he gives them a lot to do, um, very uh, contrasting textures, and also uh, he, he, he writes a part for the cello that is fairly um, independent and it's no longer just the bass line being only accompaniment but uh, brings in the cello with some melodic uh, writing as well. So we will be playing this work in an in a, uh, orchestra uh, version of course. The second movement is very state, stately, very um, lyrical, and uh, it's a short but uh, a beautiful movement. The, the third movement uh, is a really fun piece. It's in a rondo format, short movement, but it is it is bursting with energy. Um, Mozart is having a great time in this movement, writing this movement. He has written some double stops for the first and second violin and he, he, he makes them sound like a, a happy country fiddler with a lot of open double stop passages. And in, in there somewhere in this last moment you feel like he's, he's putting in a bit of operatic um, motifs, intrigue a bit, and, uh, and also a couple of sections of um, real virtuos, virtuoso writing for, for, for the first violin. And uh, just to give you a sense of history where things are, um, I told you that Mozart is 16 years old, at this point, Haydn is 40 years old and Beethoven is two years old and he is in Bonn. So here, here is where Beethoven, Mozart fits the picture. We follow the second string quartet by Mozart with a beautiful work by Czech composer Leos Janacek. Janacek um, 
was born in 1854 and died in 1928. And so his career also expanded into early 20th century. He was born in Brno to a, a family of professional musicians. And as a young man, as a young 20 year old, he already was um, conducting a large symphony orchestra and a choir in Brno. And he, um, he took quite a bit of interest, just like many um, well-known East European composers. He, he took interest in the uh, music of his uh, folk, in, in the folk music of his country. Um, he was also a great admirer of Antonin Dvorak. Dvorak was older than Janacek and already he was uh, very well respected at um, and, and Janacek got to know his music simply because he conducted some of the Dvorak works with, with his orchestra. And finally, while Janacek is only 22 years old, he got to meet Antonin Dvorak and they became immediately very good friends. In fact, they took a long um, walk, very, very um, uh, ambitious walk uh, all around the countryside of Bohemia where they would uh, collect some folk music. They would write down uh, certain motives that they would learn from the uh, local, local people in Bohemia. So the uh, work we are going to play by Janacek is his suite. This is an early work. He is very young when he wrote this and definitely he has been inspired with the Dvorak's own um, ser uh, serenade for strings, which our orchestra has played it a number of times. Um, the suite for strings by Janacek uh, has uh, six movements and it is a gorgeous piece. The first movement is starts with three striking chords and this will repeat a few times and then it goes into a very lyrical, very Dvorakian uh, melody. Uh, and the, the, so the atmosphere here is, here, here is really lush writing for a strings already. Uh, he would write Janacek one more piece a bit later for the strings titled Idyll, which is also is a beautiful work, very much in the same tradition. Um, the suite, uh, the first movement is followed by an adagio. And this adagio is um, very interesting. Here he writes for only for first violins, second violins, and violas, and he he he, he writes consordino muted. So immediately he creates this very interesting texture in, in this movement, and it is full of lush melodies. And the third movement, andante, is is one one of my favorite movements uh, in this piece. It's short, it's extremely short, but extremely simple, it's a very classical, and it's a real, really charming, charming uh, movement. Um, think of Mona Lisa, La, uh, Mona Lisa, um, this uh, famous f a painting where when you put, uh, you block half of the face of Mona Lisa, um, she looks, she looks a bit um, sad, and the other half of the face looks uh, a bit um, happier. So this 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 movement is like Mona Lisa's smile translated into sounds into music. This is followed by a contrasting movement. It's a presto in 3-4 uh, time and it is, it is full of energy. And then comes a second adagio, which 
Here he features the cellos and bass and very um, beautiful writing for them, very minimal writing for the violins, but it's a, a substantial movement with, with um, gorgeous melodies. The last movement is probably the most emotional and the most passionate movement um, that uh, Janacek wrote in this piece and is really uh, influenced by um, the, uh, the Dvorak here. Very engaging melodic lines, a striking dotted rhythm motif here. And uh, it's, it's, it's a piece that we have played in the past and we have taken on tour and always received very nice reception by, by audiences. Um, then comes a very famous work by Sergei Rachmaninov, his vocalise. This is a song that you probably have heard it in movies or in commercials. It's, uh, it's an extremely popular work. And it is one out of 14 songs that uh, Rachmaninoff uh, composed for voice and piano between uh, 1910 and 1912. The first 13 songs were set on poems, poems by Russian romantic poets like Pushkin, Polonsky, Korinsky, and also uh, Marietta Shahinyan. Now, I, I have to uh, talk to you a little bit about Marietta Shahinyan because in a sense, she had a lot of influence on Rahmaninov in creating the, uh, this uh, song cycle. Shahinyan herself was a writer. She was born in Moscow. She is of Armenian origin and she received a degree in history and philosophy and launched into a, a career as a writer. And early in 1912, in February, Shahinyan wrote uh, a letter to Sergei Rahmaninov where she introduced herself and they started a correspondence. So towards the end of that year, uh, Rahmaninov asked Shahinyan to make suggestions about uh, some poems, some Russian romantic po poems that he could write music for. Uh, for for a singer and for for a pianist, and so Shahinyan started making recommendations, and he suggested Pushkin. Uh, so the very first few uh, few um, songs in this uh, opus by Rachmaninov are set on poetry of uh, Pushkin, and. He dedicated those to uh, Marietta, Marietta Shahinyan. So shortly after 1917, Rahmaninov left Russia and he would never return to Russia again as he launched a very busy virtuoso career as a, as a, as a pianist and as, as a composer in the West. And of course, his relationship, his correspondence with uh, Marietta Shainian came to an end. Now, the vocalis is the last song of this cycle, and it is not set on a poem. There are no words, and um, it is up to the singer to choose a certain vowel and, and to keep singing on it. Um, and it is a absolutely hypnotic music that once you hear it will stay with you. Immediately this, this 14th song out of this set of songs um, became so popular that Rahmaninov within three years made several transcriptions of it. He also transcribe it for, for, uh, for two pianos, for, for also for full orchestra, which he himself also conducted. There is a version of it 
that where he conducts this piece with a full orchestra. We are playing a, a string orchestra um, arrangement that uh, I, I put together based on a, uh, on his own orchestration as well as a transcription made by someone else. So the origins of this vocalis really comes from his summer residence. Rahmaninov during the summers, he went to the Tambov region where his family, his, his family, his aristocratic family had a country estate, uh, Ivanovka it was. And here uh, Rahmaninov wrote m m a lot of music during the summers. And he had, a, of course, during the year, he had an extremely busy career as a virtuoso pianist, very much admired. And so in the summer, in the tranquility of Ivanovka, this country estate, he would be able to, to write, uh, to compose new works. So this is where uh, Rah uh, Rahmaninov composed the vocalis. Um, we follow with a work by Leo Weiner, a Czech composer, his second divertimento for a string orchestra. The subtitle of this uh, work is Hungarian Folk Melodies, and that's exactly what it is. Leo Weiner is not a prolific composer, he only wrote 30 works, and he was born in 1885. And he lived well into 20th century, of course, died in 1960. So uh, this work is a 20th century work. And it is, um, he, it is a work where um, he, 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 he it's, uh, it's one of his most popular works. His influences, uh, Weiner's influences are Composers like Mendelssohn, Brahms, very much Germanic um, uh, in the Viennese tradition. But this particular work comes from Hungarian folk melodies. In fact, the very first moment is a Hungarian wedding march, uh, wedding song. And uh, he, uh, Weiner heard a, heard a phonograph recording of a, a gypsy violinist playing this traditional song, uh, and he immediately, from the uh, from the recording, transcribed it, wrote it down, and and then he added a majore section into it and made a beautiful movement. So the first song is a um, is a uh, wedding wedding song. Um, in the second moment, it is titled uh, Teasing. This is an unusual moment, very jocoso, very, very, very uh, jokingly written. And the rhythm often alternates between 2 4 and 3 4. So it creates this um, uh, a, a strange feeling of rhythm. And the, in the Terio section, he uses a bagpipe tune. Uh, which was very, um, uh, very much uh, popular. The third moment is a lament, and here the writing for the strings is beautiful, uh, blush, gorgeous, like velvety tones he, he obtains from his writing, and, and um, short but a really touching moment. The fourth movement is titled Swineherd's Song. This is a really interesting moment. Here, here, Weiner transcribed this melody several times in bagpipes and also sung later version being used twice in his work. Bagpipes were usually made out of goat skin and in some cases they would also add to the instrument the god's horns so that's that's why the, the this instrument had some association uh, with 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 the uh, devil and weiner takes this folk song and turns it almost into a mephistophel mephistophelian 
kind of uh, tune, as if we are listening to the devil enticing these sinners to join into this dance that is keeps getting faster and faster and it is almost unstoppable and uh, making them dance their way into death in, in, straight into hell so uh that that's all on the program we won't go into hell uh we'll enjoy this program very much playing and we hope that you will enjoy it very much as well thank you and hope to to be together with you on april the 9th thanks <laughs>